Gregory Martin here with Penn State University, and I am a member of the E-Extension uh, Poultry and Backyard Flock Group as well. And um, this is something that we have talked about uh, amongst ourselves, but I'm, I'm happy to share this as well with all of you, uh, talking a little bit about managing manure and composting um, poultry byproducts. If we think about um, the what has happened in, in the era of COVID, uh, a lot of people have been um, going out and buying chickens and and buying uh, baby chicks in fact as we're heading into easter uh, more and more of our farm and ranch stores are offering chicks um, as a way of getting started in livestock and so we see a lot of different uh, methods of of holding and and housing these animals and uh, some of them are, are quite ingenious. Uh, as you can see here, a converted house trailer into a, a, a house that holds about 3,000 birds. Uh, here is a plan that you can get from the University of Kentucky uh, with using uh, beef panels. And uh, this works really, really well. You can go online and actually buy what we call a chicken tractor with wheels on it. And this goes through the field. Uh, many people raise in-season birds, which are birds that are raised from spring to summer. And then lastly, there are some of these, what I call the Cadillac ones uh, that uh, people will buy and spend a lot of money on uh, to house just a few birds. It's what they feel comfortable buying. Whatever, you ch whatever structure you choose, you should have uh, nutrient management in mind and make sure that that unit is easy to clean because every now and then, whether you are running what we call built up pack, where you have lots of uh, litter and manure just building up underneath the birds, or if you're cleaning it on a ongoing basis, either way, uh, you need to make sure it's going to be easy for you to keep and easy for you to maintain. Because if you don't maintain the, the manure or the litter very well, you're going to run into many, many problems, uh, health issues with the birds, uh, welfare issues with the birds, and of course, grumpy neighbors because there's smell, flies, uh, you know, odors wafting over to the other side as well as dust. So maintaining that is, is also a, uh, in part a selection of housing, very important to note. So if we look at... Um, design you want to have something that you can actually climb into or or take apart if you see this one here there's only a chicken door here there's not much room for you to get in here i have no idea how this person gets in to clean uh, out the the coop this little uh, protrusion here on the side of the house is an, actually a nest box and so that uh, that's not going to give him access him or her access into the house to to clean it out properly so I would say no to that one, uh, that design on the right. I would say yes to the design on the left. You also need to think about <clears throat> what you put into your chicken house because at times we will see accumulations underneath of certain parts of the house and certain areas of the house. Anywhere where there's a roost, for example, you see perches here. And a lot of folks uh, put perches in a house to include to increase the amount of floor space simply because all the birds are not necessarily on the floor when they're perching. So you have extra room for left for the birds that are on the floor. And then again, anything that is a perch, even perches in front of nest boxes, that also will accumulate manure from time to time if you allow your birds to roost there. Um, most people have different ideas about what it, what constitutes a nest box. Here's someone that made them out of utility pails with their lids half halfway cut off. Here's an organized and well-constructed box that uh, is, is being used here. About four birds per nest is what you should be looking for as far as the number per nest hole there. So, you know, a lot of people uh, say, you know, keeping birds is hard because of all the work involved. Well, there are ways of, of managing uh, manure management within poultry, especially small flocks, 
uh, one, one method is the idea of rotational yards to where you would have your birds going out into a different yard every day. So you, the birds go out into the yard for the day, they come back into the house at night, they go out into a second yard, third yard, fourth yard, and so forth. And the way you're distributing the manure in a larger area than if you had it only in one spot connected to the house. And so there's, two, there's different methodologies here that can be employed that will allow you to uh, actually reduce the number of times you're gonna have to actually go in and clean up a yard simply because you're spreading it out a little bit thinner. This was actually adopted in the 20s uh, for, for um, uh, turkey production simply because it allowed the yards to dry out and the yards were actually kept uh, fairly pristine uh, by rotating them this way, and, uh, and it reduced a lot of uh, poultry diseases. So handling manure, you got to remember when we speak about manure with poultry, if they're in cage systems, then the, the, the manure is totally com uh, composed of uh, manure. But when we're thinking about bedded animals, uh, then we have the bedding and the manure uh, combined. So what amount you put into a house, the, the depth of the litter that you put in will uh, ultimately determine how much material you're gonna be pulling out of it uh, and what ratio the manure to bedding would be. So as was indicated earlier, uh, poultry uh, manure is very wet when it's first avoided, but it oftentimes will dry up fairly quickly. If it's left in the open, it can absorb large amounts of water, uh, especially layer manure. It has a high amount of limestone in it or, or, or uh, limestone or calcium uh, rock, uh, forming rocks in there. And so that collases uh, water, it absorbs water very easily and can cause a lot of problems with dust odors and pests. So uh, you have to maintain it correctly. So as was indicated earlier, a lot of times uh, people are just throwing their chicken litter in, in, the, uh, in trash cans and, and just letting the municipality move off that. Uh, I would be kind of concerned about that, especially now with, with uh, high path AI about moving things around like that. Um, I think you're actually throwing away a good nitrogen source for your, your uh, gardens. And so I'm not a big fan of uh, moving uh, manure off the farm. Um, it would be easier for you to compost it and use it uh, in your own gardens. For three to four chickens, uh, it's not really that much manure at all. So I always suggest composting as a way of moving chicken manure into uh, a rich humus that you can put out into your gardens. Um, basically, we're taking uh, the raw manure, we're adding uh, components to it to boost the carbon level because uh, poultry manure by, by recipe doesn't have that much organic matter or, or uh, carbon to it. And so when you're adding carbon to it, about 1.5 1, 1. Uh, pounds of carbon for each pound of manure, you're going to get a, a, a fairly good heat cycle through it and get a good compost on the other side. And that's what most people will uh, appreciate it. So if you're giving free humus to your um, neighbors, they're gonna kind of overlook the idea of the noise, maybe some of the smell that they're getting from your farm. It's important to monitor uh, the composting process. A lot of folks tell me that, well, gee, I don't have, I don't wanna spend a lot of money on composting thermometers. They're relatively inexpensive. But you know, one of the things you could do is a what I call a dig and feel test, where you're actually digging into the manure or into the composting pile and feeling it with your hand to see if there's any heat being generated. And if not, then you need to go ahead and put more carbon into the pile and, and stir the pile to put air back into the composting process. And what I would like to see is actually um, a a good heat curve. And so usually when we're pulling out uh, um, litter out of a poultry house, we'll go ahead and mix it with the carbon, allow it to heat and go through a heat cycle. This helps uh, kill anything that was in that, in that uh, manure 
and render it fairly inert on the other side. And when we see this plateau start to drop and the pile start to cool, we go ahead and turn the pile once more to get a secondary heat cycle through that pile. And that way we know we're ensured that anything that's in there is going to be well heat treated and it helps degrade uh, a lot of that uh, heavy uh, carbon that's in there. So it doesn't really, you know, when we think about small flock management, it doesn't have to be really that elaborate. Here is a welded wire loop that you can get at most uh, ag centers and, and, you know, tractor supply and some of these other places. Um, welded mesh would work. Um, chicken wire would work. There's a chicken wire in stave where you drive the staves into the ground and then surround it with chicken wire. It works very, very well. I would actually say that you may want to have two of these so that you can uh, fork from one composting site into the other. And that way, as you're adding air by re shovel, by, you know, moving it back and forth, it allows that um, compost to go to a, a complete cycle. Other methods, here's, here's pallets. A lot of times people, you know, give away bad pallets and you can put four of them together and create a, a very good bin. It doesn't look pretty, but it actually works fairly well simply because if you look, there's air channels that go in and out of the uh, box very easily. You can also note, I don't know if you can see it on your screens, but there's a, a line of uh, chicken wire that surrounds the outside of this. And this helps reduce rodent intrusion and other animals from getting into the compost. This one on the right, I really like as well. I call it a Lincoln log uh, bin, uh, where you're basically, you can build the bin up as you're adding materials in it. So you don't have to lift all the way over the top. Uh, this is really easy to do uh, as you're composting litter and you can build up the litter. And then once you get to a, a, a full bin, you can either have a distribution party or you can go ahead and work that into your garden. My composter in the backyard is actually something that we talk about uh, in, in our nutrient management cl uh, classes for urban gardeners. Uh, this too can work very easily uh, to uh, in a, um, in a uh, small flock situation, but you gotta remember that you have a, a certain amount of capacity that that can handle. So if you have a larger flock, this may not be a, a, a method that you can use it might have to go to, you know, maybe two or three of these units to get enough capacity to handle the, the amount of manure that you have coming out of your flock. So, you know, this is a great conversion process. It really doesn't take a lot of energy or, or time involvement, and it converts all that material into something that's highly usable. Most composted uh, poultry manure looks exactly like coffee grounds and is very uh, breakable. It is easily incorporated into a, a garden and it holds a lot of water, like I said earlier. And so, especially with layer manure, with that extra limestone in there, you're actually, uh, you know, liming your, your, your fields a little bit as you apply that, that manure. And so you do get a, a, another benefit from using that material. One of the things that, you know, because it does absorb a lot of water, you have to make sure you don't just pile up chicken manure and just forget about it. Uh, because with every rain, it could become a soupy mess. And so I'm a big fan of, of covered piles or tarping uh, just to make sure that you control the amount of water that goes into your pile and not mother nature. Um, when we um, you know, move manure, manure out commercially, there are some uh, co uh, commercial composters that will actually take that manure, uh, work some carbon material into it, and then they compost it under compost fleece. These compost fleeces are very, um, you know, they're very economical because they can be reused. And they act as a one-way valve where uh, water vapor and, and heat can pull out, CO2 can move through it, but water can't get back in and it runs off the pile. So that works very, very well. Well, if you can't use um, compost fleece, you can't find compost fleece, 
You can use tarping, and I do what I call the pup temp tarp, where you tarp the pile and you leave the ends open a little bit so that air can come in and continue to move through the pile, but yet water uh, doesn't uh, go into the pile. So uh, one of the things that I use is what I call a golf ball hitch. It's basically a ball that you would put underneath the tarp or sheet plastic, and then you noose it with a uh, rope, and then you pull the rope and make a loop on the other end and use a bungee cord around the stake to act as a, as a shock absorber as wind hits the pile. So it's a really, uh, it's a really uh, economical method of tarping a pile and keeping the pile dry while it's uh, composting. So again, composting is kind of neat in the fact that you can control the process. You can see what's going on. You can see how well things are, are being digested by the bacteria. And if there ever is a problem, you can always add to the mix. You can either uh, add more uh, carbon to it. You can also stir the pile and create a secondary heat cycle through that pile to make it work. And so that's, that's the key part of this. It doesn't take a lot of room in, you know, for uh, five or six chickens, you're not going to have a pile even half as big as this to deal with. And so it, it, it should be something that uh, the whole family can get involved with uh, shoveling from one side to the other to add air to it periodically to uh, push this towards uh, a finished product. I was also asked to talk a little bit about high path AI since we're talking about poultry. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that uh, things are still progressing as far as positive flocks throughout the uh, United States. This is a simple Google map that I made uh, showing uh, where the backyard flocks are in yellow. The red is the commercial flocks yeah, that were announced from the USDA. Uh, so far, we've had 36 positive uh, farms in, in commercial flocks. There were over 376 uh, detections in the wild bird populations through the uh, flyways here. We have the Atlantic flyway here and the Mississippi flyway here on this side. And so as you can see, there's a number of of uh, farms that are distributed throughout the Northeast here that have proven positive. So why do I bring this up in a, in a nutrient management talk? Well, one of the things that could possibly spread uh, high path AI is untreated manure. And so by composting your manure, you're actually sterilizing it and you're, you're or at least uh, sanitizing the manure to the point where it is going to be rendered um, inert. The key thing is to make sure you have high enough temperatures. And if you don't have high enough temperatures, then you're not achieving that goal. And so, yes, everywhere um, I'm looking, you know, everyone should be on high alert as far as high path AI, simply because there's migratory birds that are moving over us twice a year. And it happens to be the spring migration. Birds are moving north. And so there's a lot of, of birds overflying most of the United States that could possibly contaminate uh, in your area. So you need to be careful and be cognizant of that, even in your backyard flocks, to make sure that those birds are not commingling with your birds. And so when we think about this, and this is true, even when you're handling manure, to make sure that your contact areas, your feet and your hands especially, and to change your clothes, after handling birds or handling manure is very important because you're breaking that cycle of contamination uh, by, by cleaning, C and D. Um, you want to make sure you clean first and then disinfect uh, to make sure that uh, you're reducing organic matter on surfaces. And this would include shovels, forks, uh, wheelbarrows, anything, any conveyance that you have uh, to move manure around in the yard you should periodically wash it down to make sure you're just reducing the level of biologicals on, on those pieces of equipment. So the USDA has a program called Defend the Flock. 
and they have a lot of tips for the small and backyard uh, flock owner as to what to do uh, and the practices to take in order to protect not only their flock, but their neighbor's flocks as well. And so uh, and it's important to make sure that you follow good biosecurity uh, methods, no matter the size of your farm, whether you have two birds or two million, it's all the same that applies uh, to help keep the uh, amount of contamination from moving from one place to another. So biosecurity on all levels is required. 